It's story time! All right. I've been meaning to make this video. We've made it before, but it was all over the place. But this month, we have gained... 21. 21,600 followers. I mean, subscribers. And a lot of them don't have time to go through my videos and ask how to do me. So, in this channel, we receive a lot of comments. And the comment is, how did you meet? Okay. So today we are telling you a story time. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. So if you don't know, this is my hubby and I, and we've been married for like seven years. Going on seven years or going on six years? Almost six years. Almost six years. <laughs> I'm increasing the years. So today we're going to tell you how we met and how my husband proposed. Yeah. So you want to start or we're going to start? You start. Okay. So we met in the year 2014, okay. December. I actually visited a friend in America and um, that's when I met my husband. <coughs> I'm sick by the way. So I met my husband in 2014. So he was he was like a man that loved the Lord, which is my way to go. So he he really for me I liked him for that way. And I even told my friend back then that I liked him and all that stuff. So on the day that we met, we met on a Sunday. So my husband was someone that goes out to share the gospel, um, to share the word of God and stuff, like the gospel of oh no, we're not Jehovah's Witness. Let me just mention that. Um, so we're just going to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and he was there and we happened to meet on the on, on the way or on we were sharing the gospel so after we finished sharing the gospel we went out to dinner with two friends and my husband and me so my husband paid for dinner hey my hubby he was not my hubby then we were not even dating yeah yeah, say the dresser, right? Yeah. Add something. Did I skip anything? Yeah, so uh, I think your flight was delayed or you got held up in customs or something like that. So you came in a couple hours late. I think you're planning on being there for a church service. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sunday morning church service. You missed that. And while I was going out with a friend of mine out uh, to preach the gospel, you came in with your friend and then the four of us went out together. Then after that, we had uh, Chinese food at King Wa, Chinese food in Phoenix, and the rest is history. Yes! No, they're not have to. Okay, yes, that's true. And then at that time, he didn't ask me anything. He just asked me where are you from and stuff like that. So later, in the, as the days go by, you actually asked me for my number. Let's tell them the story about how you, you missed it, how you could not reach me. I, I mistakenly okay, gave so, you. Okay, uh, so the week later, I think we met on Christmas Eve, uh -huh. and then we had a party at church for New Year's Eve, and that's where we really hit it off. We talked for several hours, and then we got together uh, a couple times, and then uh, you, you had to fly back to school because you're going to college. Yeah. And then I asked for your number, and you gave me the wrong number. Yeah, no, I didn't give him the wrong number. Let me tell you what happened. Um, I was a student in Canada, and by the way, Canada Carlton University, that's where I went to. Oh my goodness, I miss those days. Now that I think about it, um, so. I, when the, by the time that I, I gave him the number, I moved from one dorm to another dorm, and that dorm was bigger and very nice. And when 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 I met, I gave him the wrong the, the older extension number. If you've lived in dorms, you know what I'm talking about. So you tried to call me, and yeah, I called you several times. You weren't in. And, and meantime, meanwhile, me, I'm thinking that he's not interested anymore. Yeah. So I asked my friend. I say. Why is he not contacting me? And then Garrett told her, her that, oh, I've been trying to call Nell for a while. She didn't answer the she doesn't answer the phone. And my friend was like, no. Um, so I gave my friend the number. He gave it. She, she gave it to Garrett and started talking. Yeah. And then I made him pay we, a big we bill. Skyped. We yeah. Sky no, so before I, we I called you on cell phone. And what's interesting is Canada is almost like dialing a state it just has like a area code and things like that you don't need a country code so i thought well maybe this is just like calling chicago or something and i think we racked up like a 600 hundred dollar phone bill or a thousand dollar phone bill. <laughs> i think i owe over 500 dollars yeah. phone bill and it was crazy i cost this man a lot of money you guys get it we don't like someone who spent a lot of money yeah. so we moved to skype and then we scrapped a lot and that was because I had to go back to school because it was um, 
winter break so i had to go back to school in january mm -hmm. so the beginning of january i went back to school and then january february in the meantime my husband is we're still talking we're still talking and then march he flew me to america yeah i flew you down for spring break for spring break and, and he bought he bought me the you. flight the flight yeah. guys hey yeah my husband spent money and no before you propose actually i had not i told him a lot of things number one um, in our culture, he had to pay bride price. So when he told me that he liked me, wanted to marry me, I told him that he had to. You no, had to. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Oh, I didn't tell you, you didn't then. Tell me that after until after I proposed to you, and you said yes, <laughs> and then you went back home, and then you called me up on the phone and said, "Oh." Okay. Okay. Let's get. Okay. Okay. March. He flew me here, yeah, like everything, and I was still held in in customs. Oh my goodness, flying to America is not a joke. When you still don't have anything like papers and stuff. So yeah, and then I came here and then he proposed. I still remember the date. I still remember where. You remember tell? Yeah. My husband proposed on the 31st of March yeah. 2015. Because we met December 2014. Yeah. And you know how he proposed? Since it was the 31st of March, because my husband and I, we love the Bible. If you've been watching us, you know how much we love to read God's word. We love to read the Bible. So you read me Proverbs 31. Mm. My husband still thought that I'm Proverbs 31. Mom still Proverbs 31? Yeah. I don't think I'm a Proverbs Even 31. So. Huh? Even more so. You, ooh. <laughs> no. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Um, so he thought that I was um, a Proverbs 31 type of a wife. So he read me Proverbs 31 woman. Like, uh, who can find? What does it say? Who can find a virtuous woman for your prices? I mean, you guys know the, the, the just the Proverbs 31. Yeah, and then he proposed. And then I said yes. And Black Angus. Yeah. <laughs> Steakhouse. And then uh, we had steak. We had Caesar salad. And then we had New York cheesecake. I had what cheesecake. I love cheesecake. Yeah. And then he proposed and he said yes. And the rest is history. And after he proposed, I guess that's when I told him about the bride price. I mean, telling a man he's going to have to pay eight cows is not an easy thing to break. Especially if he, the man is like in America where they don't pay bride price. And a lot of times I think the wife, uh, the bride. Uh, the, the, the wife's family pays for the wedding and things like that. Yeah, that's that's the tradition in America that yeah. I grew up with. Us, it's other way around. Yeah. The man pays for everything. He pays for the for the wife, um, the bride price. For for our culture, it's eight cows. As long as you are not don't have children, you don't have anything. It's eight cows. Um, if if me and him were to have a child before we get married, it's an offense. So he would have paid more to the parents because that means that he's defiled their child before marriage. So I don't want to talk about that. Since I was, I, 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 he did not defile me in that way. So it was eight cows. So he paid eight cows. Tell them what, be honest to this American Ford audience. How did you feel about um, the bride price? Well, let me just start out saying uh, just a quick review we met christmas time mm -hmm. we got engaged springtime and so my expectations was we were gonna get huh no i'm saying you're so tall yeah my expectations was we were gonna get married pretty quick i mean i was an older man i was like okay let's get let's do this <laughs> i love you i want to spend my life with you let's get married maybe summertime i think i told you end of summer or uh early fall and that was my timing, and that was my thinking. And then you went back home to go back to school, and you're almost done with school. Uh, you just had one more term left, and you're going to graduate. And then you called me up and said, Oh, in my culture, there's something called the bride price. And you told me what it was, and I kind of laughed. I thought, Oh, that's pretty biblical, you know, the, the dowry and things like that. And, and uh, so I, I, I kind of thought it was. Uh, I, I liked it. I, I, I in, endeared it. Uh, but then I knew, since I didn't have a whole lot of money back then, I, it was going to take me a while to do that. So I said, as long as you're willing to wait, I don't mind working towards it. And it took a good, good year or so. And one thing that hurt was I got injured at work. I got a hernia. So I was laid up for about two months in, uh, on my back. So I, I missed on some wages there. So it took me a little longer to save up for eight cows, which was about five thousand dollars, and uh, and so 
There it is. I mean, I worked really hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I made sure I only ate like ramen and things Aww, like that. I was, like, on a really strict, I was on a really strict yeah, food this budget. Is... <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so I yeah. my expenses down. I was like, I moved to like the cheapest apartment there was. Oh my goodness. And so, yeah, so we, I saved up, uh, <coughs> quick, or it took about a year, year and a half to save up for that. Yeah, our motto for our, for our boys is to make sure that they don't go through what my husband went through. We save them money ahead of time in case they decide to marry that kind of a culture. Like for example, our, we have all boys, we have three boys, and our goal is that when they are older, they already have money for bride price in case they meet that type of a woman yeah. and they want they have to pay all that stuff because it was hard. And my husband was not the richest person. I mean, we are growing together. He was just like a, a man that was just, um, make time to make enemies and well that's one thing that um it was so a blessing i saw my heart my husband's heart he was very very nice i mean you guys know us we are not the type that shows that fake on social media anyone that knows us knows how how blessed i always say this a lot of my subscribers like to say no you praise your husband way too much i say no it's exactly like that anyone that knows us in person knows what type of my husband what type of person my husband is but it took him a while to really raise that money i mean yeah. five thousand dollars is a lot of money and my family was not budging and if we, if we're from that kind of culture you know some people pay more cows i had some people pay over 10 cows in our tribe is is um is eight cows some tribes is actually you have to build a house that when you visit you're gonna live there instead of for example living in my mom's house you have to build another house in my mom's compound to make sure that that's where we'll be sleeping if we ever visit so african culture is very very different some people pay more some people pay less but the bride price is a must in a lot of things and yeah, you know, one thing that did not stress me out, I mean, long before I met you, long before I became religious, I used to make pretty good money. Uh, I had a lot of education, I had a lot of high paying uh, jobs. And then I got into religion, and I got into some false religion, false teachings, and I made some really poor decisions. Yeah. And I basically thought I was being spiritual by being dirt cheap and things like that. Yep. I, I believe I got a lot of false teaching yep. that corrupted me. I almost went into like a cult-like uh, state. And that helped pull me out because now I was, I was motivated to work extremely hard and find ways to find more income and things like that. So that got me on the path to getting out of what I feel was uh, a very uh, toxic uh, religious yeah religion, religion can yeah. be so toxic it's it can be very very toxic yeah. we pray that our kids don't go through yeah, that they, route they're not going they through. are not going to go that route it's very very um if you don't if you have not read the bible i mean if you don't understand what the bible says you can fall into a lot of traps that can make you yeah. really fall into bad stuff and um it's bad like yeah. i mean okay we're going to do some reading together okay mikey come here so yeah, it is really like that. So the bride price. So our goal, my husband is going to help Michael. Our goal is to really make sure that we don't make the boys. We really want the boys to be able to afford the bride price if they ever marry that kind of culture. Let me know in the comments how your culture is like. Even if we're in America, is it like, do you make the husband pay everything? In our culture, even if you, as a woman you have money, um, I know some people may frown at this, even if as a woman you have a lot of money, you still should not get that money out of your own stuff and you let the husband pay everything. That way it makes the parents of the, of the wife to really trust that man that is going to take care of their child. Um, their child should never pay anything at all, not nothing, like not even a cent. If, for example, I had a lot of savings in my account, if anything, we'll, we'll let it be saved for after marriage. But the husband has to pay everything. A lot of time, to these days, a lot of girls don't kind of like are defying the culture. So they like to help the man and be like, okay, I'm not gonna let my husband suffer by, him, by, his, by himself. So they steal their money that they have saved up and then give it to the man. As we believe that um, that's actually not a good foundation because now you are showing a man that um, you, you, I mean, as a woman, our culture is that a woman is in, depend on the man. That's how we are raised. We are not raised career. Even though I was a career woman, uh, because I went to university, I went to college, and I got my degree and stuff, even though I'm considered career woman, 
um, I, when it comes to marry the career woman type of a person, kind of like um, you have to hide, not like hide them, but you don't raise your head up like that. And we have also talked about how I'm going to be a, for me, I've, I've always made a decision that if I ever get married, I'm going to be a housewife. So my husband wanted a housewife. And this is why if you've been watching us for a long time, we know that my husband worked two jobs. And at one point it was very hard financially, but me being the career, I have the career mind in, inside of me. I started social media stuff and they elevated us and the rest is history so my baby's crying so yeah that's how we met and I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was fun I hope um, I finally answered that question anyways guys I'm gonna close this video it looks like my husband is taking longer with the baby and I hope you enjoyed it and it was fun and that's how we met